Dude. Where were you? Oh, whoops. Uh, uh, if you had a newborn at home, you'd know what it's like to kind of get some extra sleep. So oh. I guess kind of got a chance to sleep in for once. Dude. They saw the I mirrored know. notifications. I'm sorry, I didn't know that. I just, I didn't think that. Are you signed into the Podium PC with your MSA? Yeah, I logged in and. <sighs> I'm sorry. I think I, I mean, I ruined it a little bit. <laughs> Are you mad? I mean, you kind of ruined the surprise of notification mirroring. Like, oh. My text message came to my PC. Oh, okay. So, in scene. <laughs> We're just kidding. Obviously, that was a little bit of a faked demo, but we just wanted to give you kind of an example of a real world scenario of some of the stuff we're going to talk about. So I wanted you to know it was fake so like the rest of the talk you don't think Andrew's really mad at me for actually <laughs> like, have some awkward silences up here or anything. So I wasn't really late. We were just kind of trying to build up a little bit about what this session is. And what you really saw was something we're calling notification mirroring as part of Action Center in the Cloud. Now this is a pretty real world scenario actually because if Andrew was a good demo presenter, he would have turned his phone, he, I mean he is, but still. He would have turned his phone on silent, right? So he would have, before he got started, he would have put his phone on silent, maybe put it in his bag, et cetera. And so if I had texted him back in this situation, he wouldn't have gotten it. I mean, it would have been on his phone, it would have made no noise, he wouldn't have known what was going on. In reality, because of notification mirroring, we'll go into this in a lot more detail in a little bit, but what you really saw was the message making it from his phone to his PC. So he was still able to see it on the device he's actually using right now, the device that is most important to him most days in his life, he got that notification and was able to do what he wanted to do and continue on with his job. So that being said, um, my name's Thomas Fennell. I'm a program manager on the FFN team. This is Andrew Bars. We're on the same team together. Um, and this is Notification Futures, Action Center in the Cloud, and the Windows notification platform. Are you guys having a good time at Build? Keynote was good today, right? Keynote was good yesterday, too, yeah? Um, one of my favorite things in the keynote yesterday was the, did you guys see the Centennial stuff, Project Centennial stuff? Did you see live tiles for Project Centennial stuff? That's something we've been hearing from developers, probably some of you in this audience, that people have wanted for a long time. And so it was really awesome for me to see that that was actually, you know, real live. We could give it to people and they can start, start using it. Um, I'm also really excited because I wasn't sure if that demo was going to work and so I'm a little, give me a second, I'm a little shaky. Um, so we can, we can jump into some of the session now. Um, I don't know, what, is it better for me to be out here? It's kind of hard. I'm really short behind the podium. <laughs> but, um, we wanted to talk a little bit about what people are asking us for. What you're looking at on the screen right now, this is a word cloud of what the developer community, and some of this is consumer oriented as well, we kind of merged them a little bit, have been telling us that they wanted for the notification platform. And this is, their, you know, the bigger they are, the more times people have asked for them. And, and like I said, that Win32 Tiles one, I'm really glad that that one is off the list, because it's one of the biggest ones that we get responses on. Um, but there's a lot of great stuff in here. Uh, make push notifications easier, sync notifications across devices, hint, hint. Um, you know, there's a lot of good stuff, and I just wanted to highlight that we do take this feedback very seriously. This is stuff that comes in from user voice. This is stuff that comes in from the feedback app. You guys use the feedback app on, on the flights for Windows 10? Yep. Most people know what that cool. is. Um, but we do, we use that thing, and we really take that feedback seriously. As a matter of fact, Bars goes through literally every single one of those, no matter what, and looks through them. Um, you know, it's not because he's the newest member of the team. He's just legitimately, <laughs> he's legitimately <laughs> super passionate about it like we all are, and he combs through that stuff. So as we talk today in this session, I just wanted to point out that these are the, some of the things that we, we want to highlight. So think about this stuff as we go through, and I'll kind of draw back to these at the end of the session. So some of this stuff you asked for last year, and it's, it's getting better, and we wanted to highlight how it's been used. So just in case you haven't seen some of this stuff, you get an idea of what's out there and what developers are really doing. And one of the things we did last year was interactive toasts. Does anybody know what I mean when I say interactive toasts, like a few? Yeah, you don't really count, but that's nice. I appreciate you raising your hand. No, so I'll give you some examples of what an interactive toast is. Um, this is an interactive toast that Cortana built, so you can text a reply. It's using the, the adaptive notifications framework that we have. So we have some XML, you can form up some visuals and some actions, and you can just have things like buttons that make it a lot more engaging for users whenever these notifications show up. Uh, this is another one. This is, these are all real examples. So this is Line. Line now, if you have stickers inside your messages, they show the sticker as an image in Line in the notification. So Lay likes bunnies. Lay sent me a sticker of some bunnies. It's really cute. It's awesome to see it show up in the notification. Um, 
This is awesome. This is Reddit. This is an app for Reddit, and this is if you have quick replies. So if you have someone send you a, a, a message, like a private message, you can do a quick reply, write to the notification, and reply right back to that person. Another one, this is our own messaging app for Skype doing this. So they're using the same framework that you guys would use as well. This is all possible for everyone to do. And then the final example I had, which I really love, is Truecaller. So Truecaller is doing this uh, when you get a call, and it may be spam, um, Truecaller is really, really useful outside of the U.S. It's not as much of an issue for me in the U.S., but a lot of people I know in Europe really take advantage of Truecaller for spam calling. On mobiles in other countries, it's really bad. It's not nearly as regulated. And so when you get an incoming call, and it might have been spam, and you don't, don't answer it, Truecaller will pop a notification and let you put something in here like, spam bot or something, if you know the name of the company, for example, that might be spamming you as well, and just click that spam button, and right there, just like that, you've stopped that call from coming in in the future, and you've helped the entire true caller community as well not get bothered by these kind of nuisance calls and stuff. So these are some of the examples of, of what we, we did last year based on you guys telling us that you wanted more engagement from your users through interactivity. We also did some stuff with tiles. Has, has, have any, has anybody used adaptive tiles? Yeah? <laughs> Carl, again, you don't count, but you're my favorite. Rob. Someone always raises yeah. their hand. Good, you've used adaptive tiles. Adaptive tiles, um, it's really about giving you rich layout on your tile. And so you're seeing some examples of adaptive tiles right here. I want to focus on that weather one. Prior to Windows 10, you had to do that all with images. Like this thing would have just been an image. It would have been the only way that you would have ever gotten it to look like this. Now, instead, that background image there, that's just one element. That's just one thing in the XML that I've been able to say, hey, let me place this through that placement attribute in the background. You get this nice ability to kind of layer things on top of other things as well. Uh, another example is this text. If you look at that 50 degrees, using some of the hint system that we have, you're able to actually make it be you know, 50 degrees and have a nice big size and look good like that. Um, some other simple stuff, those columns that you're seeing, you can do those through groups and subgroups. Uh, just using some alignment and some centering and stuff, and then you're able to actually have these nice laid out uh, organized areas. And it works great for something like the weather app, but of course, this is a Microsoft app, so that's not quite as impressive if people in the outside world are doing it. But we are getting real people in the outside world doing it, and they're actually really happy about it. And I wanted to share some of that with you guys today. So we had a developer who writes a great app, the Analog Clock Tile app. Has anybody used this? I use this. I actually really, really want, yeah, a couple, several people. I want a clock on my start screen. I, I really do use this. He had an app ever since Windows 8.1, and this is, this is a real quote, required 720 to 1440 images to be able to cover all the minutes in a day. Now, you, this is a dedicated developer. Like, this man loves our platform and loves us, and that is fantastic. I really appreciate that. Um, the largest clock package for scale 240, remember, 240 is not the highest, nicest scale. That's just kind of mid-grade was 62 megabytes because of all the images, right? And so in his app now, he's having to have a package that you can download, that you can unzip, it takes a long time. Like, he's committed to the platform, and I applaud him, but that's not, we should do better for him and for all of you. So now that he's switched to using Adaptive in his UWP application, it's only 1.6 megabytes for everything he needs to do to display all the clocks and more that he could do before at scale 400, at the highest scale. And so getting this, we were just like, okay, I think this validates some of where we're going. Developers seem to like it. And there's actually quite a few apps out there doing some cool stuff like this, layering things using multiple transparent background images, making really cool tiles with some of the hints. And so we just wanted to highlight that it's possible to do great, amazing things on your tiles now. And there's even more coming that I'm going to show you in a little bit. And it's not because you just have to do images. There's really great stuff there. One more thing I wanted to talk about that we've been working on continuously since build last year is reliability of the notification platform, both push notifications and live tile notifications, just general reliability of how everything notifications work. What you just saw on stage was WNS powered. So that notification that came in, even though we're gonna talk about how we made that work and what the real architecture underneath of it is, it's all powered by the Windows notification system. And it's reliable, it's gotten a lot more reliable. We've implemented a ton of telemetry internally. We've learned a whole lot about large-scale data and getting data to understand how reliable this platform and pipe really is. The reliability is not something like that. It's important. It's important to developers. It's important to all of you out there. But we have Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, server teams on a daily basis 
telling us how reliable our service is. They are serious about reliability and scale, as they should be. I mean, that's how they reach all of you for their apps and their services. So we've partnered incredibly closely with them, and they're not shy to tell us when we need to do better, when we need to increase our reliability, when there's things that we can change. And that's fantastic, because it makes us better. And over the last year and a half, year, we've really learned a lot, and we've been doing that by making sure we instrument everything we do end to end in the pipe. So everything is instrumented. Nothing is a black box from the, from the time it hits the server to the time it gets to the device to it gets to the shell. Every step along the way, we can see what's going on and get real data. Now, that's like, great, you're doing your job. That's what you should be doing, Microsoft. Appreciate that you're doing your job. Um, that's not why I'm telling you that. I'm telling you that because, really, the next step we want to take in that is to give you guys that data. Right? That is really important for you to know about your own application. We want to know it all up about the system so we can make the system better. But for you to be able to look at that data for your application is really critical as well for you to know how things are going. So that's the next step that we're going to take in the push notifications reliability. Now that we're building up the pipe internally and we know how it's working, we can see what we want to see, our next step is we want to make that available to you. And so we're looking at doing that. We're not ready to announce it today. I don't have something to show you. But it is the very next step. We've got all the foundation built. The server team is really on board with this. The dev portal team love exposing things to you guys so you can know how your app is performing. And this is one of the things that's higher in our priority list to get done. Live tile reliability, we've also heard people wanted to have it increased. We've done a lot of fixes since Threshold, since Windows 10. And we're still increasing live tile reliability. If you've got scenarios about your live tiles that you don't feel are working well, you want to see, more, see us do better, see us do more, please talk to me after the session. We've covered a lot of those, we think, and really done a good job improving them. But there's more that we know we can do. There's even simple stuff like if you use scheduled tile notifications, we know we can make debugging easier. So just come talk to us after the session. We'd love to hear more about that. So, OK, that's enough recap. You're all here to see Action Center in the cloud. So let's move into some of the stuff you're asking us for that's not just ongoing, some of the stuff that's fresh for this year. So this stuff, this is actually one of my favorite parts of this job. Because Matt and Leigh are sitting in the audience, and they have a session tomorrow. And they want to show you all of this beautiful UI stuff. They want to show you really cool stuff that I wouldn't typically get to show you because it's about their session. But I get first session, so I get priority, so I get to show a little bit of your stuff and steal a little bit of your thunder. So I'm going to show you guys some of the new UI for Action Center, some stuff that's not been seen. You might have caught a glimpse of it in the keynote if you were really eagle-eyed, but just how Action Center is going to look and stuff in the future. So here are some of the UI updates that are coming for Action Center. So Windows Action Center, did you guys see this in the keynote? Did anybody see it? So this isn't final. Like, this is still, there's, this is directional. Like, I, we do actually have this running on my machine, but it's not exactly how it's going to look in the end, but this is giving you an idea of where we're going and what you can see. There's some really awesome UI updates there. We're also, of course, bringing that, you know, some of that same look and feel to mobile as well, so you can see we've carried some of that over. And then what we call toast notifications, you might know them as just notifications, but the ones that pop up, they're getting more rich as well, more complex. You can do better things with them. And so let's talk just a little bit about how you do this stuff. Oh, OK. Well, apparently, Matt and Lay didn't want me to steal their thunder as much as I could have. So they've gotten into my slides and taken a little bit of my stuff away. But still, at least I got to show you some pretty pictures. And I can tell you some, some cool stuff that's coming for tiles. So I, you know, OK, right. So I guess, guys, you really want people to come to your session, right? Like, this is an infomercial at this point. Like, you really, OK. <laughs> So, and they've inserted a plug. Yeah, sure they have. OK, so um, do, do go to Matt and Lay's session tomorrow. There's some really good notification stuff, toast notifications, tile notifications. I'm just itching to spoil it for Matt right now, but I, I won't. I'm, I'm going to leave it alone. I'm just going to stop there. Uh, go to their session. It'll be really worth it, I promise. So I can't talk to you about that stuff, but I can talk to you about Action Center in the cloud. I can talk to you about the meat of this, of this session. So really. A picture is worth a thousand words, right? So instead of really just talking you through how everything works and the architecture, why don't we just let Andrew show you how everything works and a real kind of think of this as a day in the life of how we hope people will use Action Center in the cloud. Now, I want to point out a couple of things. Action Center in the cloud, as we're going to show it to you today, is really going to distill down to a couple of user features. But it's, it's more than that. We are building an entire infrastructure to put a lot of activities, notifications in the cloud and make it a lot easier for you as developers to have seamless experiences across devices. You'll see a couple features that kind of make it obvious that it's useful today, we hope. But that's not all it is. We're just starting this journey. And also, on top of that, 
people are writing some of this right now. So the pipe is working, but maybe, you know, needs a little fine tuning. So, you know, bear with us just a little bit. Hopefully everything goes really well, but uh, I left the demos to Andrew just in case everything goes absolutely horrible. <laughs> uh, let me switch it over to the wolf real quick. All right. So before we dive into the demos, we want to talk about how we use our phones compared to how we use our PCs. When we think about our phones, we start to realize that everything we care about is on our phone. The apps and therefore the notifications that we care about are all on this device. Facebook, text messaging, WhatsApp, they're all there. But sometimes your phone is in your pocket or it's sitting in your bag and you're using a different device. You might be on your laptop, you might be at your workstation, and your phone isn't in front of you. With Action Center in the cloud, the notifications that you care about come to the device that you're currently using. So to, de to demo this, we're going to walk through a typical day in the life of a college student. Now, Thomas, I know you didn't really have apps in college. Uh -huh. Got to get them in. <laughs> get your digs in. Yeah. Just try to follow along. Okay. Like, Imagine a current modern kid going okay, to college. Got it. Right, sure. Yeah. So, for us college kids, our phones are really important. They're how we stay in touch with our friends and make plans and more. But there's some teachers that don't let us use our phones in class. What jerks, right? <laughs> and honestly, some of those classes aren't that important. We'd rather be on our phones. Mm -hmm. You're paying a lot of money to be on that phone sometimes in those classes. <laughs> So for some of these demos, you're going to see us using an Android phone. We've actually built Action Center in the cloud to be cross-platform so that it works with Android and Windows. For this demo, I've logged into Cortana on my Android phone with my Microsoft account. And I also have my Surface Book here, which is also logged in with the same Microsoft account. Because of that, all of my notifications from my phone will be mirrored to my PC. For example, when Thomas sends me a text message, I'll get that message on my phone, which might be in my pocket, and if you can kind of make it out there, the notification gets mirrored to my PC. I don't ever have to take my phone out of my pocket. As we talked about, users really love interactive notifications because they allow you to take quick actions without leaving the context of what you're working on. For example, with this notification, I can actually reply to the text message from the convenience of my keyboard. You guys had pocket PCs in college? That's what I had. <laughs> <laughs> that notification gets sent back to my phone. And if the, there we go. Wi-Fi's working pretty well. Did you hear it? It came back to me. So that was real notification mirroring for text messaging from an Android phone to a Windows PC. Yay. <laughs> Now, some notifications are purely informational. When you get the notification, all you want to do is just dismiss the notification. For example, you might be in a really annoying Facebook group chat message, and Thomas just keeps on sending you a bunch of text Facebook messages. All you want to do when you get that notification is just dismiss it. I didn't know you thought our group chats were annoying. I can remove you from our group chats if you don't <laughs> want to be in our group chats. I'm, I'm trying to do work, and um, you're just always chatting with me. Anyways, so now when I'm at my work PC and Thomas is trying to distract me, I can get that notification, and we're still building up the UI and making this a little better, but you'll be able to, dis to dismiss that notification from your computer, and then in a few seconds, the notification will get dismissed from your phone, so that when you take your phone out later in the day, just got dismissed, you don't have to see those redundant notifications. Finally, there's one last scenario where you actually have the same app installed on both of your devices. The app is on your PC and it's on your phone. You're already getting these notifications on both of these devices. However, when you dismiss a notification from your PC, it currently isn't dismissed from your phone. You have to take your phone out later in the day, you see that same notification that you've already dismissed, and you have to dismiss it again. With Action Center in the cloud, we solve that with what we call universal dismiss, 
which apps can effortlessly add support for. I've done this in my app that I built, Power Planner. It's a homework planner for students, and it's the app that I personally used in college to help myself get through college. One of the key features is it sends me reminders about my homework that I haven't completed yet. It was really useful, however, since I had the app on my computer and phone, I would get the reminder on my computer and dismiss it there. Later on in the day, I'd take my phone out and I'd have to dismiss the same reminder again. So I've got Power Planner installed on my Windows phone and also my Windows PC. You can see the app there. And I just got a reminder here on both of these devices. Check out what happens when I click Dismiss from the PC. That reminder's gone from my phone. I don't have to dismiss it in two places. The same works in the opposite direction. If I happen to be on my phone, I can also dismiss that reminder, and it'll get dismissed from my PC. Come on. <laughs> oh, oh, magic. That worked the first time. Look at that. <laughs> Uh, we we're almost flawless. We're living in the future. That, that we're was living, like we're three out of four demos that no, worked it's perfectly. Good. <laughs> Anyways, these are just some of the magical experiences that Action Center in the cloud enables. Back to you, Thomas. Thanks. So, what do you guys think? It's good. It's useful stuff. Okay. I want to thank Andrew for doing that in his app. I mean, he's going to be basically the first app. He's got a little bit of an unfair advantage over you guys for getting his app <laughs> in the marketplace. But I mean, Power Planner is a real app. People take you know, and, and use it quite a bit, especially in college scenarios. Um, I mean, that's why he built it to help himself. It helps a lot of people. And you know how it is when you're organizing your life. You don't really need one more thing to deal with. And one of the things we heard from developers is that you know, there is a bit of notification overload that can happen to people as well. And people want that to be handled for them in an easier way. So this, we think, is a great way that can help you guys have your users feel like there's a magical way that you're doing this. And like we said, it works cross-platform. Everything that Andrew just showed you will work between Android, Windows, and Windows Mobile as well. So let's talk a little bit now about why we did this, why, why you should care. Um, we have a little bit of data that we wanted to share with you guys. Action Center on the phone is launched greater than 10 times a day for 40% of people. It's what you do, right? Like, what do you do when you get up in the morning and, and pick up your phone, right? You, I mean, I think almost every one of us in here probably checks Action Center, because it's the place you go when you've missed things. On the PC, greater than 10 times a day, it's only about 13% of users use Action Center. But the funny thing is, like, I'm looking around in this room, and, you know, actually, most of you, if, you're, if you're, you, you have PCs out, or if I go into any office, you're working on a PC, like, you're in front of your PC all day, every day. So we thought, with these numbers alone, we can tell there's an opportunity to make Action Center on the PC more engaging than it is today, make it more useful for your workflow. On top of that, if we couple it with some of the other data that we've gotten back, two out of every three text messages on Windows Mobile are replied to via interactive notifications. More text messages are replied to because of that ability to quick reply in that text message than aren't. If you take those two things together and realize that people really like interactive notifications, adding that to applications really helps people engage. It's helped the messaging app engage. There are other apps we've got similar stats for. It does drive engagement towards your app. Coupled with the PC is the place they are. That's where they're doing everything in their typical day. I mean, you, th these people at this table are kind of a perfect example. They're all sitting around this table, and they're all using PCs. And there is one person that's got their phone on the table as well. That person's phone is on the table because there's some stuff that comes there that they just do not want to miss. It's so important to them that they leave their, we do, I mean, do you not do this, right? You go into a meeting and you put your phone on the table or you go out to dinner and you put your phone on, you're like, you're at your desk and you put your phone out on the table so that you can see it while you see your PC. Imagine if you didn't have to worry about that. Imagine if it was just all available to you at your PC instead of you having to deal with both of these devices at the same time. So coupling those two things together, we thought there was a real opportunity to engage people on the PC with the things that they care about, where they're using their, where they're doing their work, and help engage with your apps as well. So this is, a, this is what you just saw. This is what it means to users. This is what we were really trying to solve. You receive and act on your notifications no matter what device you're using through notification mirroring. If the app's only on your phone, that's okay. It can come to your PC and you can still take action on it. You can still get value out of it. 
That's the first feature that we're introducing today is notification mirroring through Action Center in the cloud. You also saw Andrew talk about universal dismiss. Universal dismiss is when the same application is on two different devices, you've built a UWP application or you've built a, an app for Android and you've built one for Windows, and you wanna get that magical experience of them seeming in sync for notifications. So you get those notifications and you can dismiss that notification once and watch it dismiss everywhere. And that's what we're calling universal dismiss. And we're gonna talk about how these work and how you can actually get them in your apps and do this stuff yourselves. So the specifics of how this is integrated with the ecosystems, we just wanted to make sure we touched on so everybody knows what you, what you need. The supported platforms are Windows and Windows Phone, Windows Mobile. It's also on Android, so it's, it's cross-platform, and we'll show you how to do that in a minute. And what we're talking about today is phase one of kind of a longer journey that we're on. We're gonna show you mirroring and universal dismiss. We're gonna get into some details about that as user features. But Action Center in the cloud is kind of a longer term thing that we have, have more in store for that we want you to be able to do stuff with as well. To start in phase one, this is Cortana powered. You saw Andrew, you heard Andrew say that you, you have Cortana on your Android phone. We'll show you next uh, kind of how that all works or what you need to get it going. But for now, it is Cortana powered. And later on, we're gonna kind of move it into the operating system and kind of branch out a little further. But to get it out there, to get people using it quickly, to really see how people react to it, we wanted to get moving really as quickly as possible. So, notification mirroring, the first set of these. How does this work? You see on the screen a notification, an NC, notification client, right? That's something that's running on the, dev on the device. It's running both on the source device, that's the phone in this case, and it's running on the destination devices, a Windows tablet or a Windows PC. The NS in this picture is a notification server. Now, we went generic with these because honestly, these are, it, like I said before, this is actually all built on top of WNS. It's all built on top of the existing push notification platform, but it's a different feature set. We're just saying there's a notification server, Microsoft owns it, it's in the cloud. It's the same one you really know and love today, hopefully, in WNS. Um, and what's really happening here is the notification, the blue one on the phone, starts out on the phone, goes through the notification client into the cloud, and then because on those other two devices, you're signed in with your MSA, we, we do what we call fanning it out. We take that notification and we send it to eligible endpoints that are available to you that are your devices, your accounts. And that's what notification mirroring is. Now, the cool thing is that this includes assets. So if you send a cool notification on the source device, the phone, and it has a neat picture in it or you know, something that makes the app logo look really nice, we're gonna include those as they get fanned out to the other devices. Now, uh, you didn't see it working in Andrew's demo quite yet, but it's there. We will have assets as well so that your notifications look rich. You've worked hard on how your notification experiences look on the source device, and we wanna bring that experience to wherever they're going so that you know, users get a great experience with your app and feel good about engaging with it. That's the flow of how we fan things out. Let's talk a little bit about dismissing those mirrored notifications. Why, why is that so important? Well, if we're sending more notifications out to the devices that you own, and you don't want more noise, you don't want it to be even more management of more notifications across devices. So to do this, we knew that if we sent things to your devices, we needed to make it easy for it to disappear from those devices too. So a similar scenario, except now you see we start with one of the notifications on that tablet. That was one of the, four, the mirrored notifications. And if you swipe it away, we send a delete for those other notifications back up to the notification server and out to all the clients that are eligible to receive that delete. So now you've managed that notification one time on whatever device you're currently active on, and it takes care of it on the others for you. This isn't the same as universal dismiss, although there is overlap here. Remember, this is just from a mirrored notification and you don't have the app on the destination devices. We still wanted to make sure that that gets cleaned up nicely. And then there's one more critical scenario that we wanted to enable, and that's activating these notifications. If you start with that notification on that tablet and it was a mirrored notification and it had a text box in it or a button or something that the user could do to interact with it, we wanted the user taking that action to really do the thing that they were trying to do. So what you're seeing happen on the left, it's sending the action over to the originating device, to the source device, and that device is executing it as if it actually has no idea that it wasn't just executed on the local device. As far as it's concerned, that was like the user being on their phone and tapping it and, and taking the action or whatever. What's happening on the right side of the picture is if you've acted on that mirrored notification, when it knows that, when the cloud knows that, it sends a delete to the devices that have the other sets of those mirrored notifications. So it's deleting it on the PC because it was handled. And so again, your action centers, your notification centers are all nice and clean, and the actions actually happened. So how do users get this? How do we actually get this so that we can, we can try it out? 
Starting on Android, you can get this through Cortana, like we said. So has, have people in the audience used the Cortana app on their phones? Yep, there's, there, yep, and then quite a few came up over here. So the Cortana app's great, go get it. Get the Cortana app on your phone. In the future, you'll be able to get a build of the Cortana app, and we'll have details about this on a blog post that we do after, after build. And you sign in with your Microsoft account. Now that's something like your Outlook.com account, your MSN.com account, maybe you still have a hot, I still have a Hotmail.com account, right? That's your Microsoft account. It's what you sign into Microsoft services with. That's what tells us that this device belongs to you. That's how we build up this user notification store in the cloud that is all your notifications targeted at only you. You're the only one that can get to them, just like you're the only one that can get to other services that you trust your, the MSA with. And then you install apps and you use them and they show notifications and you know, it ha the magic happens in technology and they get to the cloud and get fanned out. Now, if you would just get Windows Mobile, you would get most of this for free. So if you have a Windows Mobile device, you get Cortana on it, you can sign in with your MSA, you're basically set up and ready to go. Um, and all you really need to do is use your apps as you would normally use them in that case. And you'll get these notifications. And this works for both mirroring and dismiss once, dismiss everywhere. So these are kind of the prerequisites for both sets of those features. And on the destination device, the only requirement is that you have a Windows PC of some kind and you're signed in with your, with your MSA to that device. So now, as a developer, what do you have to do to actually enable this feature? What code do you have to write to make this possible so that your apps can participate? You don't have to write any code at all. You get notification mirroring, like this, does that guy look <laughs> excited or what? He looks pretty excited. This is pretty much exactly how I looked when it worked for the first time and we were like, yes! Um, but yeah, you, don't, you actually don't have to do anything. You will get this for free. Um, it will just work for your apps that are already out there today once we turn this pipe on, assuming the user has the Cortana app installed and they have their MSA signed in, um, it will just work. We're hoping that there is a lot of benefit for you here. We're really, really focused on app engagement this year. You spend a lot of time writing apps. We realize you don't only write those apps for our platform, you write them for a lot of platforms. And we wanna help you drive app engagement. So if you've written an app on Android, your users on, your, on PC can still get great benefit. Or you've written an app in the UWP platform, there's a lot of great benefit for user engagement with interacting with notifications and helping them feel these magical experiences. We really hope this drives user engagement and some of what we've seen tells us that that is the trend that was gonna happen going forward. But we thought, wouldn't it be great if we could do more to drive user engagement? Your apps are your lifeblood and they need to be discoverable to you. So what if we could help users discover your app in the Windows Store? If you've taken the time to write a UWP for, micro, for the Windows platform and you've got it in the store, we should help people know that that app is there and drive engagement on PC for you so that they can use your app. And so again, a picture is kind of worth a thousand words, so let's just go ahead and show it in a demo. Yeah, so one of the most difficult things about releasing an app is making sure your users can actually discover the app. You might release an awesome UWP desktop app, but your phone users don't even know it's available. With Action Center in the cloud, it's easier than ever before for your phone users to discover your awesome Windows 10 UWP apps. Because when they get that mirrored notification on their desktop, they're also gonna be able to instantly discover that, hey, you could install this app on your computer and get an even better experience. For example, if Thomas sends me a message online, I'll get that notification on my phone. Sorry. Come on, send it. <laughs> Sorry, it's my fault. The Wi-Fi the wi is not, it's not connecting at the moment. For once, it's user error? No, it's really, it's the phone it's on this end. Oh, I, can, <laughs> I can turn Wi-Fi off and see if we can make it work. Give me a second. Sorry, folks. All right. The demo, <laughs> up. Wait, oh. There we go. There we go. Okay. So then I got that notification mirrored on my desktop, and as a user, I noticed I can reply to this message, but there's also this get app button. If I click that, that'll take me directly to the store where I can discover that the line app is available on Windows 10. That means for you guys, your users can effortlessly discover your apps, you get a new install, and your users get a richer experience on their computers, all without doing anything. Back to you, Thomas. What do you think? Good for app discoverability? <laughs> We talk to a lot of developers, hopefully some of the people in this room, I see some familiar faces, but like 
Getting the app discovered, after all the work you put into it, like not seeing that app get installed is really, really, like that's an important thing, that an opportunity we wanted to help you with. And so we think this will drive engagement. We hope it will. Um, we can't wait to see if it will. So we want to talk now a little bit about what you have to do to kind of get all of this enabled. So some of you in the audience may have seen this feature and thought, my enterprise doesn't want this, or my apps doesn't fit this scenario. Like, it just doesn't make sense. Um, and so we wanted to be thoughtful about that. And in reality, you can actually, you can opt out of this if you want. And we've got three layers of the ability to opt out depending on who we're talking about. It's all up to the developer at the beginning. So the topmost level of opting out is up to the developer. If you have private or sensitive data that you don't want mirrored and sent around, then you can choose to opt out. You can say, I don't want my app to participate in this. Or you can say, on an individual notification basis. Like, what if you have a banking app and you're OK with some notifications being mirrored, but you have some notifications that you have like balance information and you don't want those sent around? You can just opt out for that one notification if you want. Or maybe your bank doesn't want this at all. And you can just have, when you write the app for the bank, you can just opt out the app altogether. We also let enterprises control this as well. So, you may have a high security business impact app, and we would definitely have some of these at Microsoft, and they, they will want to opt out of this. And so they will be able to opt out for the entire user. So the enterprise is also in control. And then finally, well, we, we, we do believe that users should absolutely be in control. Users may choose that they don't want this feature. Um, they want to opt out for certain apps. They want to opt out altogether. And so we are going to have the ability for users to opt out as well. So I, I want to talk about each of these in a little more detail. So for you guys as developers, if you're writing a UWP app, you can opt out, like I said, of an individual notification. You may have seen something like this before. This is how you build up a toast notification. You would just have your typical toast that you build up. And one of the new things you'll be able to set on that toast notification itself is notification mirroring. You can just set it to disabled. And on that individual notification, when you send it, it will never make it up to the cloud, and it will just stop on that local device. In addition, what if you did decide that you wanted to opt your app out completely? Uh, it's pretty simple as well on the manager, the Toast Notification Manager itself. You can just set it to disabled. And once you do this, you only have to do this once. You can do this the first time your app ever starts up. And once you do this, it's done. You don't, it won't, you don't have to do it again later. It'll just stay this way until you tell us otherwise. You're opting out of the, the whole system at this point. Um, it's pretty easy to do as well. And I, didn't, I don't mention it here. I don't show it. But if you're sending push notifications, we'll also have headers on the push notifications that you can opt out on a per notification basis as well. There will be some. I'll actually kind of show you some of the, the headers that you use in a different spot in a second. Um, what about Android? What if you want to opt out of this on Android as well? Um, you can actually see. Does anybody see that XWNS mirroring line? Um, so on, an, on Android, you can put extras into the notification itself. So this is just, I think of it like a property bag of extra stuff that you can throw into the notification that the Android platform doesn't care about, but people getting this notification in other places can actually pull out and do something with. So if you put this in your Android notification, even if Cortana is installed and the user is opted in, for your app, we won't send it up to the cloud. It'll stay uh, on the device. And XWNS mirroring is actually the header you would use for a push notification as well to say, I want to I opt out for this individual notification. Now let's talk a little bit about an enterprise. How, how does an enterprise opt out of this? So an enterprise opts out by really just using policy. This is just a typical policy that you can set. You could set it locally. You could set it through group policy in Active Directory. You could set it through uh, something like an MDM uh, agent. But you can, you can set policy like you would expect. It's pretty straightforward. And then finally, what do you do as a user? You can see here there's some settings. These are really inside the Cortana notebook for now. They will be both on Windows Mobile and on Android. Um, and you can say, I want to I wanna have notifications. I want to have them mirrored. And you can manage individual notifications as well if you want uh, inside those settings. So you can decide what you want to go. Some things might not be important to you. Uh, at the same time, we're going to enable easy muting. If you get a notification on your PC, and it's just something that you don't want to get again in the future, like you're like, I don't need these mail notifications. I get those some other way. We'll have a button on the notification so you can quickly just mute it, and then you won't see it again in the future. And if you want to turn it back on, you can go in settings and do that later. But at least you'll have the way to opt out quickly as a user. Uh, and so now I want to hand it over to Andrew to talk a little bit about universal dismiss and what you do as a developer for that. Yeah. So if you remember back to the first demos that we showed you, we showed you two features. Notification mirroring, where your phone's notification comes to your PC, and universal dismiss. Universal dismiss is that scenario where the same app is installed on both your PC and your phone. 
that means you're already getting these native notifications on both of your devices. For this example, you're actually getting the same notification on three devices already. However, those notifications are completely separate today. There's nothing linking them together. With Universal Dismiss, we allow you to link your notifications so that when the user dismisses one of your notifications from one of the devices, it's dismissed from everywhere else. We showed you how this works with my app Power Planner, which I added support for, Universal Dismiss. We've got a screenshot of Action Center on desktop and mobile, and you can see two of my reminders on these devices. To enable Universal Dismiss, all I did was assign something that we call a remote ID on the notification. The remote ID uniquely identifies the notification across your devices. On mobile, I assigned it this remote ID, and on desktop, I assigned it the same remote ID. That means these two notifications become linked, so that when you dismiss one of them, it dismisses everywhere else. How do you enable this in code? It's literally one line of code. We brought you to a developer conference to show you one line. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty awesome, though, because if you tried to build this yourself, which you can, you can build this today, set up the server infrastructure, and build this experience if you'd like, but it's a lot of work. You get this nearly for free. On UWP, there's a new property, Remote ID. You simply generate something that's unique and shared across your devices. For my app, I say it's a reminder, and then I include the user's online ID, which is shared across these devices, and also the homework ID. You can even do this on Android. We're working on adding support for Android. And you can put this property in there today, and in the future, when we light this up for Android, you'll be able to achieve the universal dismiss on both Windows and Android. So why should you do this? It enables these magical experiences where your user dismisses your notification from one place, and it's dismissed from all of your devices, no matter what ecosystem that you're on. Your users will truly love this feature. I know that my users will be excited about it. It's a great value add, and it took literally no work by me. I've never written so little code to have such great user benefit before, and I really hope that you guys can all add this to your apps, too. So we're going we're gonna to wrap up, and we're going to move a little quickly, because we do want to have time for questions, and we've only got about 14 minutes left. So I just wanted to recap where this is coming to, okay? It's coming to Windows. It's coming to Windows Mobile. It's coming cross-platform on Android. Like I said, we're just starting this journey. We have a lot of this working, but it's not completely done and ready yet. Some of the stuff we showed you in the Android developer experience isn't ready. But it's coming. We're working on the pipes, and we're working on bringing everything together. That's why the talk is called Notification Futures. It's coming in a future release of Windows. We'll talk a little bit more about timelines, like I said, in a, in a blog post after build. And again, this word cloud, I wanted to see if I could maybe strike a few things out on this word cloud if we work backward through some of the stuff that we talked about in the session. Sync notifications across devices. This one was interesting. If, when we got this feedback from people, they kind of meant both of these things. They meant universal dismiss, but they also meant mirroring. And so it's nice to be able to get both of those out of the way and done. Uh, notification reliability. I talked a lot about push notification reliability and WhatsApp and Facebook really keeping us on our toes because if anybody knows about sending a lot of notifications, it's those guys. And then I talked a little bit about live tower reliability. That's not a messed up build in the slide. Like I, I only crossed it out halfway because we think there's more to do and we really want you to help us validate that. So we're still working on that. I crossed out widgets and Action Center only halfway too because I showed you a little bit about how Toast are getting more flexible. You can do more stuff inside them. Um, Matt and Leigh are going to talk about in that in their session as well. But we recognize it's not fully widgets yet, but we know people are asking for that. We're moving in that sort of direction, and so we, we know we have more to do there, but we're getting there. And then this one really makes me really happy. Win32 tiles through Project Centennial are able to now do live tiles as well. And you can do Toast notifications in Project Centennial applications as well. Um, so that's awesome. And then there's a few other things that, we, that I want to cross out, too, to do that thing where I steal their thunder a little bit that are on this slide. So, but you're going to have to be quick, because <laughs> I did that to them again. So there's a few more things. Like, go to their session. Make sure you go check it out. They've made a lot of things really great. Um, and, and there's more as well in their session than what I just crossed out on this slide. Um, I'll touch on this super brief 
Cortana is a great start, but we want to do a lot of what we talked about today in the OS as well, so it won't be limited to Cortana in the future. We want to maybe make it easier to link notifications instead of that remote ID that we showed you. What if we could do this with some heuristics in the cloud where we can tell that they're associated? Um, we, don't, we don't know how to tune that yet, and we were hoping to seek feedback in the upcoming months to get that from developers uh, about how they would like that to work. We do want to let you do data mining. If this is Action Center in the cloud and they're your notifications, you should be able to get to them and you should be able to do something useful with them for your app. And we want to enable that in the future. We're not there yet, but these are some of the directions we're going. And then I know those of you that are in an enterprise context will want AAD. We don't have it right now, but we're, that one's, we're really working hard on that one. We know for people who are using AAD, it's a replacement or it's really, you know, they're augmenting to MSA from it. And so we're, that's the next step in our identity story for how this, this will work for users. And then one last thing that Andrew wanted to just make sure that he touches on for you guys, and it's really critical. Yeah, so I started off on the outside, and I know what it's like to be an outside developer. Sometimes feels like Microsoft isn't listening. And we're working on changing that, and our team is helping change that too. So we want to hear from you guys, the developers, because you're the ones that matter. You make this platform successful. If you have feature requests or suggestions, go to the feedback hub, or our user voice website, and tell us your thoughts. I'm going to be personally listening. I've triaged through everything in the feedback hub. That's how we generated that word cloud. We're looking at these ideas that you submit, and we're prioritizing based on them. If you have any questions about our APIs, we own live tiles, toast notifications, and the push APIs, tell us. Go to the MSDN forums. I look through there. I actually respond to all your questions. And I'll help you guys use our APIs and make awesome apps. A great example is we recently uh, uploaded some samples for doing Win32, uh, sorry, modern or desktop application toast notification activation. It's a pretty complex topic, honestly, but we had some people on the forum saying, hey, we appreciate this blog post you did. It's not enough details. Can we just have some samples? So I just recently, yesterday, uploaded some stuff to GitHub. I can put that in the blog. It's just a raw sample that one of our developers that wrote, literally wrote to the feature wrote the sample for, and so we'll give it to you guys, and you can just go use it. It should make life easier if you're doing toast from Win32 applications. Um, and so the next slide, the evaluation slide, please submit an evaluation. My boss is sitting right there. It's not that I want to look good in front of him. I want a better score than him. So please, please, please submit an evaluation. I really, really, it's shameless. I'm shameless, Andrew. I don't care. Um, <laughs> it, but it really is important to us. We want to know what you guys thought, and if it was a useful session, just be perfectly honest and give us an evaluation if you don't mind. And that's it. Thank you guys very much. We can do, we can do questions now. Can you, is it, can we, after him, is that all right? Can you go to the mics? Yeah, if there's mics in the, in the middle of the room. If you, can, if you can move to a mic for questions, I'd appreciate it. Yes, Carl, what can yes. I do for you? One of the things that you clearly avoided saying, so I'm going to bring it up, is uh, you didn't mention iOS. So what's holding you back from that at this point? We're, we're looking at iOS. It's a little harder. The platform's not as open in terms of being able to read notifications. Um, what we can do on Android is we can use the notification listener. The user has to give permission for an app to do that, and we're able to actually then get notifications out of the device and move them into the cloud. On iOS, it, it's just the platform's not open enough to do that right now. Now, we're looking at some creative ways of doing it. I don't have anything I can tell you, but I mean, it's not that iOS is off our radar, that we don't want to do it. It's just legitimately technically harder to do right now. So we're looking at it, though. We're going we're gonna to try. Um, let's do, I'm going to go back and forth if that's okay. Okay, well, I don't know about that, but go yeah. ahead. Well. First one is, um, is there any plans to have multiple accounts in the Action Center? Because, for multiple. example, Azure AD and an MSA? Not, I'm, oh, so you'd be signed into both, and you'd kind of want a yeah, view of, like, of the notifications for each account. My personal would be MSA, it's, and my company would be Azure AD. Okay. And I want to receive or see them on my corporate PC. It's, my good, phone. it's really good feedback. It's really feedback for Lay, so he can take it and, and talk to the, the UX designer folks, and we can, we can look into it for you. If you, if you get to Lay, just yep. make sure that you give him your details, and we'll, we'll send you mail. OK. And then quickly, the other Hurry. question. <laughs> um, if I stole your phone, uh -huh. and you left it unlocked, mm -hmm. and I put Cortana on there, could I get your notifications? No, and because you have to way... sign in with my MSA. But wouldn't I be able to sign in with my MSA? They won't get my notifications, though. If I had your phone and signed if so, into Cortana. If you stole my phone and managed to unlock it and... Yeah, if it was unlocked, say. If you've got his unlocked this, phone, uh, he's a big... Yeah, if, if you've got my unlocked phone, phone, there's probably a lot more interesting stuff in my email that you're probably right, going to go after. But yeah, you're right. I mean, I think that's... I mean, technically, if you've compromised the device, there's not much we can do. To, and if somebody 
wasn't looking for Cortana, they wouldn't know about it. Now, because there's no way. Of, is there any sort of feedback to say I've just sent off the notification? What we would be able to do is potentially wipe that device. So that, like, if you, you notice you lose your device, right, then we can yeah. issue a command to wipe that device. But there's, there's, if you've compromised the device, there's not much more we can do. If you've got interesting suggestions, though, I'd love to hear them after the session. I was thinking, like, the stalking potential of this is probably quite high because you could just go and grab someone's phone and yeah. get all of their notifications. You'd right. probably just tweet all these pictures. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, they're just of my daughter. She's, like, two weeks mm -hmm. old. Go ahead. Uh, you said that in the future you would embed some of this in the operating system. Um, given that Cortana is not available to the majority of the planet, right. uh, what are we talking about? Is this anniversary edition or beyond? We'll talk about timelines in a blog post after, after build. So I'm not gonna t I, I can't say right now, but yeah. There's, we understand that Cortana is in limited markets, and we absolutely want to address that and not have it be in limited markets for the feature set. So um, we're, we're working on it. We just wanted to move fast, so that's how we've gone for now. Okay. Thanks. Yep. I just want to be super clear on the Android side. Um, so as an end user, all I need to do is install Cortana, and then all the notifications go to my Windows 10 PC. So, install do, Cortana. The, the sign developers in don't have to opt in to the notifications. Right? Install Cortana, sign in with your MSA, and yeah. for right now in the Cortana app, you do have to opt in. But okay. we're actually still working on, the, it's up to Cortana to decide what final experience they want. They may opt you in by default. They may let you know that it's a new feature. But I mean, on a per app basis, developers don't have to opt in to enable that. No, no, no. It yeah. would just be, if you install Cortana and the user turns on the feature, they can choose then to opt in on particular apps, but by default, all apps are opted in, and they could then go in and turn some off. And then, so if it's like SMS from the system, like say a Samsung phone, mm -hmm. um, you'll be able to reply from the Windows 10 PC. Correct. Yeah, that's what we showed you. Uh, okay. It's one of the demos. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure it wasn't like Android developers had to opt in. Nope. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yep, go ahead. Hey, a uh, question about what if you get a real notification that hasn't been mirrored on your desktop first? Are you mirroring that as well onto your Android device? So if you if you have the if so you're saying if you have that native app installed on your desktop, correct, and yeah. then you have a, the same app on your Android or on some other phone and it's potentially mirroring, right. so you'll be able to mute it if that if that happens and you don't want that like if if you're heavily dependent on mirroring but then like some apps you have in both places you can just mute those ones and they won't come through they'll yeah. stop that that way you'll keep from getting annoyed by having too many okay and to avoid avoid like duplicate notifications coming in you would have that remote ID set? The remote ID is when is, I mean, yes, ideally. So if you have, if the developer's enabled it and you have the same app installed on your PC as you do on whatever phone, remote ID being turned on will mean that those are definitely linked together from a dismiss perspective. You may still end up in a situation if you're mirroring that one where you get it, but you can just mute it the first time and never deal with it at all. We're looking at ways to make it so that if we see that you've got the app installed on the PC, the native app, to just never show you those mirrored notifications because the native one's probably just doing what it, you want anyway. Yeah. So. It, it's an interesting scenario because some apps you know, have WNS right now. They don't have as rich push notifications as the device notifications. Right. And it'd be in, it's kind of interesting in the sense that a user might want to have their, their Android notification come up even though they've got an existing app that has right. One of the reasons we made yeah. it today so that you would still get a mirrored notification potentially, even if you've got the app installed, is for exactly what you said. Like, there's richness depending on platform and app, and that, that may be more important to you than the native notification, and we're okay with that. So, okay. Thanks. Yep, sure. Well, I, I really want to be respectful of the next people, so probably, probably last two questions, and I've got to go, okay? So if you've got uh, the app on both devices, and is there a way on one of the, uh, one of the devices to react on the mirrored notification, like you can start a background task. So you get a notification on the PC and the notification is mirrored on your phone. Is there a way to react on the phone, like starting a background task if the notification gets mirrored? So for now, the scenario is from phone mirrored to PC, ah, okay. not the other way around. Okay. So is there a way on the PC to react on the mirrored notification then? So you can. If you get a mirrored notification that has some interactivity to it, like okay. a text message, you saw Andrew actually reply to the text message, that sends the, note of the, the, that sends the information you entered into that notification back to the source device. And the no, source that, of that's, not my, uh, that's not my question. I mean, if I could start a background task if the notification on the PC arrives. You can't, though. Not today. You can't today. start a, okay. a background task that's related to some app on the PC. It's okay. purely going to be a command sent back. It's an interesting suggestion. Okay. If you can stay, I'd like to know what you would do. Yes. That would be awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Last one, and then we've got we to get going. 
Uh, I feel as though I might, may have missed something during the presentation, so you know you can throw tomatoes at me later. Okay. Uh, I don't have any though. But um, the, the, some of the stuff that you were showing is a, a text messages on uh, multiple platforms. Uh, that uh, uh, and it appeared you were talking about SMS, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, don't you have to tie into a carrier to get SMS on your PC as well? No. So it's a it's it's a duplicate of that notification. The notification that you got on your phone is duplicated onto your PC through the cloud. And really, from your phone's perspective, everything is contained and happening on your phone. It doesn't know that we sent anything to the PC. OK, but so what sends the duplicate message to my PC, my phone? The phone has a client running on it. If it's Android, it's Cortana. And it sends it to our action center in the cloud, which knows how to reach your PC. OK, and then, alter and then I can, uh, is that something that's available today? It's going to be available in an upcoming release of Windows. We, oh, okay. I mean, we have it running in beta. You, that's what you yes, saw. Yes, OK. Yeah, now that's I what we're follow. doing. So, so that's uh, the plan. You've nailed the scenario. Yeah, okay. text message comes into my phone. My phone sends a message to my PC. If I reply on my PC, it goes again through the phone. Back up. Yeah. Thank you it. very much. That's clarified. Thanks. Yep. Thank you so much, you guys. We appreciate you staying. If you have more, we'll mill around, but we've got to get off stage. So.